Oh, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Actually, when the moment you hit touch and not touch. I just want to share this. This is a, this is a, this be a, a mini vid, a mini vlog right here. But as I'm searching for, I'm looking for a, a slave ad that has Hebraos, H E B R E A O S or H E B R E Hebrae. Yeah, I think. E A B R E A O S Hebraos. I seen it in one of the um Israelite brothers uh, a video. It was like kind of five, four, five part video. I'm probably gonna have to go over that video again, take a snapshot so I can at least show you what I'm talking about. Some of you might be familiar with actually identifies the so called uh, Negroes as Hebrews. They knew who we were. Right. You know, the white man, so-called white man, knew who he was buying and selling, at least the original ones, because there was a conscious effort to deny that access to our identity. You know, so in some of the earlier so-called slavery ads, right, you know, where they were looking for um slaves, you know, looking for people to enslave. That they actually identified and even in their documentation, yeah, the videos called, um, white man knew who they were selling or buying. They knew who they were enslaving. They knew who the slaves were. They knew who we were. Something of, I, I have to get the name. It's out there on the YouTube. Mm hmm. And he points out certain, certain information that's out there, but it's suppressed. This is why this is the real media. This so called, um, Un uh, underground media, alternative media, whatever you want to call it, but this is I and I Hebrew media, and I wanted to share this with you. I've noticed this on a couple of um, a couple of uh, pics and references that there's a lot of our information, right, about who we are, um, that has been saved among the Afro, you know, the Afro Hispanics or our our Hebrew uh, brothers and sisters. Right. Of a, of a different maybe complexion. Right. And therefore, because of white supremacy and the supreme delusion, we don't really see we, we've been we've been bred and misled not to see them as I and I people. Right. As you know, we talk about black people, you know, and who's so-called black people. But we as Hebrews know that it's the so-called blacks. You know, the the so-called Hispanics or some say Latinos, Ladinos, as well as many of the native tribes, right? So-called Indian tribes are Hebrew people. Not saying all of them, because not all black people that were brought over here are Hebrews. And that's the point we really have to recognize. This is why it's not judging by so-called appearance as the Moshia, Moshihenu, Yeshua says to us, but to judge by righteousness right even the whole idea about the negro christos right the negro the black christ we find that preserved among our afro hispanic people right or among our hebrew people in in um uh, in uh central and south america and also throughout some of the islands like you know puerto rico the ephraimites so forth and so on so that's that's a part of the story but it's not saying that all the people because somebody somebody's from america black in america is necessarily saying that they are hebrew they might even be hebrew racially but their spirit they might have the spirit of asal right or a canaanitish spirit Right. You know, they have a Canaanite spirit. So that that needs to be noted right there. But I noticed that a lot of our information, right, like this one right here, this is the um, the beast fighters, the criminals being executed here. This is actually a Wikipedia link. Let's move this over here so you can uh, see what it says on the Wikipedia. It says Damnatios ad bestias. Right. Um Damnatios, I guess the damned, and perhaps, and um, and beast, right? But what you really are looking at right here, let's look at this right here. What you really are seeing is the early Christians, right, or the early followers of the Moshia, black people, right, um, being fed to the lions and tigers and the beast in the European, the the Roman blood sports in the arenas in the circuses you know this was the entertainment right our death just as it was then so it is now there's nothing new under the sun and you can clearly see the types right here 
All right. You can clearly see the types. They even have right here where other black peoples, right, were whether they were Hebrews or not. Some of them might have been Hebrews, but they had denied their identity. So they were serving this um embryonic embryonic form of white supremacy, you know, the Greco Roman, you know, world system. Right. And we see right here this one being, you know, uh fed to the some sort of a beast right here. Right. And also what they did to the beast. I'm talking about the, the animals, the animal animals. But remember what they said? They said basically they try to say that the, the black people are just like beasts. It's just like animals, so forth and so on. And then they also have sex with them. So you really have to, you know, examine. You have to do some skullduggery on white supremacy. What is white supremacy thinking? So I just want to point out some of these uh, paintings right here that I came across. Because we always see some pictures of, you know, Christians being fed to the gladiators. And what they would show you is some latter day painting. You know, there's another painting out there, like in the Colosseum, so forth and so on. But this is actual art and facts that have been recovered because people were proud of these things. So they had these like mosaics and murals, you know, put into the homes of the boules. You know, yes, they were boules then. Even the boules today are on that Greco thing, right? Not really an African or a Hebrew or really a, a, a free black thought, but a kind of a, you know, um, now, how to make a how to make a boule, how to make a a slave mentality. So we kind of see this right here, which is also very interesting, you know, which is very interesting right here, right? Um, a couple of more of these to get a wider view. You can see a, a wider view of this, you know, put into the ring, right? And they do the same thing here, you know, when we see this kind of black on black, so called black on black violence. Right. Or Hebrew on Hebrew violence. Right. That's going on. Um, and this is another one. This is a little better picture. You, you see the, the one over here. It's like this is a was a leopard or something like that. You know, just eating, eating this, this, this brother up right here. Cause we know who they put into these arenas. Right. They put the Jews, the black Jews, the Hebrews. Right. Um, and the Christians. Right. And the and the Christians and the early Christians were Jews, were black Jews, black Hebrews. Right. They were the followers of the Moshe Yeshua. Right. And this is before Rome accepted, you know, well, Rome didn't really accept it. Christianity basically broke Rome's back. So they play the old, if you can't beat them, join it. And then there's a the last image right here as well. You know, some of the gladiatorial games and they, too, were predominantly Right. Um, black, so-called black people, but many of the Hebrews also among these black peoples. Right. You know, one would say, well, if they're all black people, how come they didn't get to, how come they didn't join together? Cause they, they were all different tribes and nations. Right. They were all of different tribes and nations. Some were Hebrew, Hebraic, uh, Messianic. Some of them were just African, Canaanite, heathens, Edomites, others. Right. And many of them at certain times could pass for black people. Right. You know what we call today black people. Right. So and plus Rome played the old divide and conquer while they united themselves under their Greco Roman culture. They play the divide and conquer among different people, you know, um, and that's uh, pretty well known. So the gladiators. Right. Not the gladiators. Well, yes, on a certain level, sometimes a Hebrew who who basically turned his back on his Hebrewness basically would join with the system of things. We see it today. Right. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. But those who were fed to the lions, the early uh, the black Hebrews, right, black Jews, black Hebrews, the Christians, the real Christians who were black people were fed to the lions. Right. It's not like they show you in some of these movies today. This is some of the, the real art and facts that they don't want to show you for the obvious reasons, right? Because it becomes so obvious when you start to, uh, you know, look at it, you know, yourself. This might be like in, in, in so-called uh, American slavery, right? Where they had a black man or like in that movie Glory, where they might have a black man beat another black man, right? But they both might not be the same kind of black man. They might be each other's color. But they're not definitely they're not each other's kind. Otherwise, they'll be able to recognize, 
you know, white supremacy, and they would join together if for nothing else, and they were black, right? But that's not the fact of the matter. So we really need to grow past that paradigm because that paradigm contributes, you know, contributes to our enslavement, you know, or our Stockholm, our Stockholm uh, syndrome, syndrome, all right? So this is just one example right here that I tend to find on some of the, you know, under under other languages like French, you know, and some of the French pictures and, you know, some of the Spanish pictures in the Anglo Amorite, Anglo American uh, media and history channel. They don't really show these. They might show them from a distance. What they might do sometimes, and we've seen this often, and then we'll record it and try to zoom in. They'll show it like from some distance like that quickly. And then they might focus on this, like a light skinned so-called brother right here. They'll focus on somebody like that. Plus, they also had this thing about having them naked. You can see this dude here has no pants on. You know, they got some kind of homoerotic feeling out of that. The Gentiles, the Goya, all right? You know, but it was through this process that some of the Gentiles actually turned, it became Antipas. They turned against, you know, white supremacy. You know, they became, so to speak, like um, ones like John Brown's on a certain level, maybe not to the extreme of what John Brown did, right, um, or attempted to do. But they basically saw, you know, that truly Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, is a true is a true Lord and Savior, and that their whitewashed gods were false. You know what I mean? And even then, you'll see find some murals later on where some of them will be thrown into the ring too, as well. Because if you went against their false gods, it didn't matter if you was white too. You know, if you go against their false gods and you know speak the truth to their the powers that so bloody want to be. They will throw you in the arena as well. And there's there's examples of many black, I mean, white folks, you know, who are actually realizing the truth, speaking up to who is the black Hebrews, who's the Israelites and how the supreme delusion of the European mind is nothing other than Satanism, Luciferianism, that white people have been deceived by the devil who don't like them, you know, any better than he likes so-called black people. He's against hu humanity. You know, and unfortunately, people get caught up on the old skin for skin game that Satan told Yahweh. He said, basically, skin for skin, you know, in Job chapter two, I think it's around verse four. Right. It's around verse four. But I know it's Job chapter two. So check it out. You know, check it out for yourself. So anyway. Shalom, shalom to him that is far off and to him that is near. Sayeth he who be who he be is thy divine majesty, and he will heal thee in Yeshua's name. Shalom, Rastafari.